one thing you lack. Everybody say one thing. One thing. One thing. Jesus says, sell everything you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Jesus is saying, I know you, you are wealthy, you are a rich guy, but all of your riches is temporal. It's not eternal. It's, it's, it's temporary. If you let go of your possessions, if you sell what you have, you help those in need, you will have riches that will last for eternity. So Jesus actually is giving him a better alternative. He's not taking away from him. He's actually giving him the key to make his riches grow and multiply and have eternal purpose. Jesus is saying, do not worry about losing your wealth because you will have more of it. When you give, you become a channel of blessing, right? When we give, whatever we give, we give our time, we give our effort, we give our money, we give food, we become a channel of God's blessing. And, and what we give away to the advancement of God's kingdom will always go. God will make sure He multiplies your effort, He multiplies the seed that you planted, and it blesses more people. It actually advances, expands God's kingdom. So, so essentially, you become richer, right? You become richer. Because what you have, you gave it to God. You say, God, you have full control of everything I have. God uses it. The little seed that you have, it grows, it multiplies, it expands, it reaches more people. Because of that one thing that you gave up for God. All because of your generosity. You know, our church, we're not a big church. And, and we don't apologize for it, right? This is where we are right now. But I am so proud of you all. Because whatever we give to this church, whether it's our time, you know, whether it's the, the time we spend cooking, the time, the time we spend driving to come here, you know, we could have, we, there's so many things to do at this very hour. But we chose to worship God together as a congregation. And, and we give of what we have out of the abundance of our heart. When the offering basket comes around, we give. Maybe it's a dollar, maybe it's, it's a quarter, you know, maybe it's a hundred dollars. Whatever amount it is, we give and we give with joy. And you know what happens to that amount? It may seem small in our calculation but see that goes to an orphanage with a hundred kids who were left by their moms and by their dads at the doorstep of the orphanage given up they rejected kids nobody liked them they were in, some of them were on the brink of death sickly malnourished kids and yet there is this woman now the orphanage had grown, it has more orphans, and, and, and Bonnie Zelma, as we call her, she started a church. Danny and I, by God's grace, were one of the very first pastors. This church now has grown to what? 60 churches. We are supporting those churches. We could have never done it by ourselves, all of us together putting whatever we can with joy is now expanding God's kingdom to a place that's far and remote and poor. Those kids, I'm telling you, one of the very first orphans that Mommy Selma adopted is now the principal of the school they also built from, from the donations of people like us. That they now have nurses, you know, that they sent to college. They have agriculturists. They have all kinds of professions, teachers. They were little kids before. But because of the faithful giving of people, now those kids are also becoming missionaries. 
they are improving their lives, you know, they're becoming a blessing to their family. Some of them have gone to search for their biological parents. And that's why this young ruler does not, he does not have the concept. He thinks he has wealth, he has to keep it for himself or he might lose it. But, but the Bible says, you, your life, if you try to keep it, you will lose it. You give it away, you will keep it. And you will live. But when Jesus tells this guy, you know, go sell your possessions, give to the poor, follow me, this guy's face fell. Like he probably had to pick up his jaw on the ground. You know, he was like, what? And he went away sad. And um, the Bible tells us he went away sad because he had great wealth and he wasn't ready to give up that wealth. He wasn't ready to put God above his wealth. Here's a person who had a direct encounter with Jesus and yet left Jesus with no change at all or maybe worse than when he started. And so, and that's very sad. In the Bible, we see a lot of people encountering Jesus, and they live happy. They they leave Jesus with a new perspective, with a with a God kind of perspective. They leave Jesus repenting. This is a rich young man who had everything going on for him. He came to Jesus on his own. Nobody pushed him to go to Jesus. No, Jesus didn't even call him. He came on his own, bowing before Jesus, wanting to know what, what would it take to have eternal life. And then when Jesus told him what to do, he said, no, I can't do that. And he left sad. He left broken. It shouldn't be the case, right? He could have been a disciple of Jesus. He wanted eternal life, the life of God. But he did not like it bad enough that he'd give up what's valuable to him. You know, following Jesus as a price. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's costly. Salvation is free. But following Jesus on a daily basis entails a lot of sacrifice, entails a lot of self-denial. God is not against money or wealth or possession. He's not against you having wealth. In fact, He said He gave you the power, the ability to get wealth. But why would Jesus give you the ability to get wealth? Because He wants it to expand the kingdom. So He's not against you having material stuff. What he's against is if your possession starts possessing you. Mm -hmm. If you trust your possession more than you trust God, that's what he's against. Giving is key to joyful living. You know, here's what I believe based on what I know from the Bible. God owns everything, right? He owns everything. But he trusts you enough. He trusts me enough to make you a manager of what he owns. Mm -hmm. A steward just means a manager. It's not yours. You're just managing it. God trusts you enough to say, Hey, Tammy, I'm going to give you an income of $10,000 a month. I want you to manage it. And as a manager, our posture should be, okay, okay, God, this is not mine. This is yours. Do whatever you want to do with it. Because when we do that, the moment we give everything back to God, your finances, for example, your time, for example, your strength, for example, God is not responsible for it. And God is not responsible for you. But, you know, we can criticize this rich young man as much as we want from walking away from Jesus. But how many times do we do the same? What is 
got one thing that you can't let go. And because you cannot let go of that one thing, you cannot move to the next thing that God wants you to do. What is that one thing? Let's just imagine that Jesus is standing before us and we're kneeling before him. And we, we run to him because there's something that we need. There's something that we miss, that we lack, we know. Something deep inside of us is screaming for that. And uh, sometimes we know what it is exactly, sometimes we don't know. But for this young man, he knew exactly what it was. It was eternal life. And God was offering him eternal life. But he wasn't willing to give up his treasure in exchange for that eternal life. And actually, it's not an exchange. You give up your treasure, but God will just multiply. You don't lose it. You have more of it. So God, as we kneel before you in a posture of humility and maybe respect also and, and surrender. Lord, for some of us, maybe we already know what's that one thing. For some of us, we don't exactly know. For some, we know already. But Lord, I pray in the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, by your grace and mercy. Lord, that you would reveal that. And once you've revealed that, Lord, that may we receive it, may we hear it, may we accept it, may we invite it to come into us, may we put it above the treasures of man, the life of man. Lord, you are the life of God. It's your presence that we are so dearly thirsty for and hunger for. How can we not respond to your invitation? How can we not give up all these little things of little value for that one treasure? Who can give us what we are aching for? And Lord, we want a life that's, we, that we can pass on. A life of God, a life of substance, a life of commitment, a life that's willing to make sacrifices for the good of those who are poor and needy, of those who do not know you yet. Lord, may we run to that kind of life. May we not withhold anything. May we commit our God, our life to this life of God, our, our mind, our soul, our heart. Because in the, at the end of the day, this is all what we're living for. This is all what we're created for. And what a sad day it would be when we decide to walk away from that which is of most value to keep that of lesser value and to live a life of men. Lord, forgive us. Help us that we may fully grasp that which is truly important, yes. that which truly matters yes. in this world and in eternity. Yes. And Lord, unlike the rich young ruler, may we leave this place full of joy yes. and gladness Yes. May we live this place rich in all things and free. Yes. Lord, thank you. Because you made it available. You did not hold it back. You give it freely to us. And all we have to do is receive it and follow you and become a disciple of the one true God who is the author of life. Lord, this we pray in the name of our Savior, the life of God Himself, Jesus. Yes. Amen.